It's official, guys. Pikeman reigns supreme. Do what here, guys? And we're going to be getting into a PvP video here. Um, and why are the Pikemen supreme when it comes to PvP? I know in my last video, I was looking at the buffs that the infantry guys are getting on their equipment pieces and how there's multiple for their attack and their defense and so i was excited to see how that turned out and then i had some people asking me about counterattack. i was already kind of looking into counterattack, but i didn't fully understand what counterattack did i thought like um it might have been something where when somebody is attacking you or you're attacking something else and then somebody kind of sneaks up behind you and starts hitting you um that was not the case. I didn't realize it until I actually got here into the uh, the battle reports. So when we're looking at these battle reports, and you know you can see here. Sorry about that, guys. I forgot to turn on that do not disturb. So got that out of the way. So no no other pop ups coming up. But here in our battle log. You can actually see you can see the the chart um, of the length of battle and when the the taper off of troops. Um, this right here is really interesting because you might be able to see on longer battles where there was an uptick when somebody's troops were healed, uh, a dip in yours where it started like came down quickly if one of their skills popped off and it was pretty devastating. Um, you can also click on this right here, this battle log. You can actually see the rounds of combat that went on and what happened per round as well. So, as you can see, our party launched an attack on them. That's how many troops that they lost, the 1,300. Their party lost a counterattack. Our party lost 75. And then they attacked us in the same round. We lost 71. But then we did a counterattack and did 1,247 units. So they also, you know, we had some of our skills pop off and kill some troops and whatnot. But what I want you guys to actually take note here is the, the counterattack. So when you're thinking of counterattack, I want you to remember I told you how, how to get over here. Hero Encyclopedia, counterattack. These are the only two heroes that actually have counterattack skills. The ability to counterattack. And I have confirmed this because in an earlier attack that I have here against a stone giant, we're going to hit this chart right here. You can see who I have in there, my two archers. And when we open this round one, we have a counterattack from the stone giant. The counterattack from my guys did nothing. And I have enough troops on this um the, these two heroes in this attack that if there is a counterattack even if it's not highly buffed there would at least be a few troops that were killed and that is not the case here and if you're wondering if well maybe you don't get a counterattack off of you know monsters well here my Laird and Yvette opened up round one and as you can see, our party launched a counterattack right on this line right here. We did 1,035 troops that we killed. So when you're looking at the buffs and the equipment and how I was getting excited with the infantry buffs, a 15 to 20% more buff doesn't make up for double damage, which is what we're getting here off the counterattack. We're getting double damage. I did 1,035 units. I killed 1,035 units over here when I attacked. And then I did it again when I counterattacked. That's freaking broken. I mean, if I were to add 15% more of these units destroyed because I, had a, I was able to increase my damage, which the damage increase doesn't correlate to an, an exact troop increase, but even just for reference, even though it would be less troops killed for that percent increase to my damage. That, you know, 15% of that doesn't equal 100%. So, until they come out with more heroes, with more versatility, that 
also has allowed you to march different troops with counterattack and skills and equipment that would put counterattack capabilities on other heroes. This right here is going to end up being the meta. This is what you're going to want to focus on for now. Um, pikemen. They're, like, double damage versus anything. Even though the pikemen are weak against archers, double damage is still going to blow it out of the water. So take a look into that. Wrap your mind around double damage. Broken. Absolutely broken. Um, so when it comes into PvP, though, I want you guys to remember that you don't always have to bubble. You're not going to be able to bubble if you're in a war frenzy either. So in times when you can't bubble, you don't have the gems to get a bubble, or you're in war frenzy, I'm going to give you guys three things that you can do to protect your troops. One, so if you guys want to you can actually set a rally for eight hours that gives you an eight hour window where one of your marches is pulled out of your keep it is not able to get attacked even if your keep is attacked those troops are out of the fight they're queued up for a rally they're basically in some mythical alternate parallel universe thing sitting in limbo waiting for that march to either get canceled or be concluded and other people can actually join you into that rally to hide their troops as well. So if you have like six or seven people with ghost rallies up, everybody can effectively hide all of their troops. Um, the other thing, you can hide your troops in somebody else that has bubbled. And then lastly, so for a ex brief example, this ODNS, let's say I was in this tribe. I would not be able to safely hide my troops in here because the square, which is this whole thing all around here, is bordered with this one. So the ODNS, if this ODN two people, they look like they're going to be in the same tribe, just a sister tribe started up for overflow. But that could technically be attacked. This, uh, this fort could technically be attacked by the other tribe that's bordering it. And then to show you an example of what a safe tribe looks like, we're going to go see if I can get this off the map. Nope, I was really close. I got to go up, though. Got to go down. Where? Where? What did I do? Oh, yeah, I, I got us really close, though. Um, so our auxiliary tribe for over here is, you know, it can hold reinforcements, but there's nothing bordering this square. So even if somebody comes and ports right here, if they try to attack this, this fort, it's going to tell them that it needs to be bordering one of their tribe flags. They need a border touching our border. So it's safe. So you have ghost rallies, you have reinforcing other bubbled players, and you have your own forts that you can put the troops in and flags. You have your flags as well. Now, you can only put one march per any of those things. You can only host one rally. You can only put one march into any specific building, but you have multiple buildings you can hide your troops into, and you have multiple people that could be bubbled to hide your troops into. And then even though you can only host one rally, you can join an un unlimited number of rallies as long as you have march slots for that. So definitely take advantage of that to hide your troops especially in a war frenzy you land somewhere you got your shield up send all of your spare troops out into ghost rallies and in reinforcing a bubble player you can go into an area ready to attack and have a few people port around you knowing that they're not going to attack so they can host your other troops because especially if you're going after somebody and their tribe has bigger players than you, you're going to want that ability to hide your troops. Otherwise, especially in KE, it's just free points. Also, when, when we kick off KVK, you don't want to be giving points to the enemy server, and they get those points the same way KE works, by killing and wounding troops. So it's a good practice to get into is ghosting your troops when you're going into an attack, unless you're some uber big player. Ghost them. With ghost rallies, 
um, and hide them into other bubbled players. And this is where, you know, a lot of people think that, you know, oh, I'm a free-to-play. I'm never going to be able to help or contribute or this or that. Free-to-play players can scout. Free-to-play players can have their shields up, especially in a really active tribe where they're getting a bunch of gems. The villages can be converted to generate gems as well. So there's a lot of versatility in that. The free-to-play players can also get in. They have less troops that they need to, to poke out. So some of these big pay-to-win players, they're going to be like prime targets for, you know, for point farms. Um, that big player is going to get in. They can only send out five marches. Four marches isn't going to get rid of all the troops that they have in there because they got a couple million or more. And then they're going to be stuck there with the war frenzy. So a lot of players are going to stop it. Whatever their maximum march is, they're going to stop at that. Or they're going to blow straight past it and try to have 10, 20, 30 million troops in their keep to try to defend. But one of the most beautiful things about this game is because they're stuck there under War Frenzy... There's no limit to the amount of people that you can have attacking that person. So what if they have 20 million troops? All it takes is 30 or 40 marches of 100,000 troops each. 30 or 40 players that can march 100 to 160,000 troops and then send four or five marches. All of them are attacking at the same time. That one guy is going to get zeroed so fast. And he's going to be screwed and there's nothing he can do. This game, while early game caters towards the pay-to-win players, late game, the pay-to-win players are going to get screwed. Um, and I, I, I cannot wait to see what they come up for on this game later on. I know I'm just sitting here rambling. I'm not moving anything on the screen. There's nothing really to, to see right now. You guys should have been able to put the phone down, walk away, and listen to me on the headphones. Um but there, there's so much going on in this game. They're constantly updating things. I've tried to reach out a few times to get um, some more specifics on their patch notes, but they don't put them out yet like what normal games would. They just say that they adjusted something. Well, did you adjust it up? Did you adjust it down? It leaves a lot of ambiguity for us to try to figure out on our own, which does make the game exciting, but it makes it to where I am not able to do all of the research on that stuff for you guys and give you a heads up before that update goes live on what to expect so hopefully they'll change that here in the the future but uh, i'm not holding my breath on it but either way the game here is still very much fun the the pvp is very interesting being able to attack people mid-march and everything like that um i'm gonna be doing more pvp stuff here soon um I just wanted to go over some of the basics on how to protect yourselves, how to read your battle reports and whatnot. Um, and I gave you all the information you needed up front, and then I'm rambling. So, you guys, you guys are here to see my hear my voice at this point. But y'all take care. I think that's really all I got for you guys at this time. That I hope this answers that counterattack question that you guys had and satisfies your guys' desire to hear my luxurious and sultry voice. <laughs> hit that like, hit that subscribe, and maybe ding that bell. Y'all have a beautiful Mother's Day.